I'm going to go ahead and call the study session for October 9th to order for the Coast Mesa Sanitary District. Uh, Madam Clerk, the roll call, please. Director Arthur Perry. Here. Assistant Secretary Robert Uten. Here. Secretary Arlene Schaefer. Present. Vice President James Fairman. Present. President Michael Schaefer. Here. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, public comments. This is the time set aside for members of the public to speak on items within our jurisdiction, not on the agenda. Not seeing a lot of public with us this morning. I assume there's no public comments, so we'll go to items of study. Mr. President, just for the record, you did receive one written public comment from Mr. Jim Mosher, and that has been presented to you. I'm sorry, I went right over it, Madam Clerk. Thank you. Everyone get a copy then? Yes. Okay, thank you. All right, uh, item number one, Scott. Um, thank you, Mr. President. Um, Ed Roberts will be giving this report. Uh, good morning, President Schaefer and members of the uh, Sanitary District Board. Uh, Ed Roberts, your District Code Enforcement Officer. I'll be presenting the September 2018 Code Enforcement Officer Report and a summary of my activity for the month of September. Uh, during the month of September, I initiated uh, five proactive scavenging investigations. Uh, none of these were complaint-driven. These were all uh, proactive. Um, for the benefit of the Board, uh, there is a map at the end of the uh, presentation packet that delineates the areas that I was in. Uh, conducting these scavenging investigations. Um, these were primarily con concentrated in the north and south end with uh, none uh, located in the east end of town. Uh, I had two in the Pepper Tree Royal Palm area and three concentrated around the Harbor and Victoria Harbor and Baker Corridor area. Um, nothing of note. Um, most of the folks that I interacted with were cooperative. Um, no interaction with them that went negative. Um, does anybody have any questions regarding the uh, scavenging? Oops, sir. Ask the same question. Are there repeat offenders or are these new people? No, sir. All, all first uh, contact people. All first contacts. How are we doing on the alleys? Have you, you know, I have a particular interest in one alley, of course, but um, some of the other alleys, I, I've noticed on my alley a couple of people riding bikes with big bags of stuff, so I'm, I'm assuming they're going to. Are you uh, noticing anything in the, in the I, I do, sir. Um, if you'll notice consistently over the last, probably the course of the last year, um, we've had a lot of activity in that Pepper Tree Lane area. That's the, uh, for the benefit of the board, that alley uh, runs west of Harbor Boulevard and it parallels Har Harbor Boulevard, and uh, it's uh, bordered by, I imagine, Baker and Adams would be the best way to describe it. There's a concentration of multifamily apartment units um, located directly west of that alley. And that's why you probably had the proliferation of the um, scavenging activity there. Um, not to make a generalization, but that that area has a lot of recyclable material going in and out of those cans. You see a lot of beer bottles, beer cans, that kind of stuff um, originating from those multifamily uh, units. And the folks are going to go where the, the scavenging material is located. Um, most people, I, I, I wouldn't know how to characterize it any better than there's a higher likelihood of activity being reported in the single family area as opposed to the uh, the multifamily homes that you see there. Um, there there's many places to hide, tuck in bees, <clears throat> excuse me, bees. There's a, uh, a mix of multifamily and businesses that are out there where they can tuck in behind abandoned businesses, that kind of stuff. And I'm, I'm sure you, you know, you had the one report on Pepper Tree Lane, which is probably spillover from some of the folks going up and down the alleys, I would guess. Yes, sir. Uh, you know, the, the short end of the alley between um, Baker. between Baker going north, they just re, re Concrete. concreted the whole thing, so it's making it a lot easier for people to get through. Yes, sir. And just based off of my experience, uh, it's a lot easier. Uh, transient individuals tend to shy away from public view. So uh, rather than be out on Harbor Boulevard, where there's a higher likelihood of interaction, contact with law enforcement, um, they'll frequent the alley more as a secondary highway, a route around being highly visible on the, on the main corridors. So uh, that, that's normally, and, and my job is obviously go where the activity is going to be. So um, I'll sit there in that alley uh, for a while, and odds are I will spot one sooner or later. I, I had a comment. On the maps, 
I love the part that you put on when you pick up this, you know, on what day. In other words, it gives us a chance when we're riding around to see that if the trash cans are out, hey, this is the Tuesday that they're picked up and that kind of thing, because it's hard to remember. Oh, well, thank you for the feedback, ma'am. Oh, we'll, we'll continue doing that. Like yeah. that. So question, you know, um, on the Pepper Tree Alley, yes, sir. is that all commercial? You, you have a series of the car dealerships. Uh, say, say, for example. Talk about the dumpster. Are they all dumpsters? Are they all no, sir. It's actually a mixture. Uh, you have a, a fairly even mixture. We actually have a, a pretty high amount of CMSD-owned trash carts in, in that alleyway there, and you will probably, I would say it would be a ratio of 80 to 20 percent CMSD carts as opposed to actual dumpster facilities. It, it was interesting. A while back I got, I got it, was asked by a resident who owned one of those multifamily and they get a, I guess they get an option, don't they, Scott, on whether they want to go to a bin or carts? Those four family? Well, the new developments do. Um, the, the new developments, they, they prefer the carts because I think they believe it's going to uh, keep the value of the property up. Um, so that's what we're seeing a lot in the, in the infill developments is they yeah, want the it, carts. It, what this resident had come to me about was the fact that the city made them all build enclosures for their – I thought it was just for, for the big bins, but it's for cans and everything. The city made those apartments – and close everything. Yeah, now that now that I think they're seeing more, more most of the developers they want the carts instead of the can or they want the carts instead of the three rent bins. So they're ma they're making um, adjustments where they have to enclose those carts because there's really nowhere other place to put them. Yeah. You know, yeah. Yeah. True. It, it, they can't even put them. You can't put them in their, their side yard in the garage. There's just no room, so they're they're accommodating them. Hi. Yes, uh, Wendy always made it clear to the city at the development review committee that new residential developments were required to use our service unless we gave them an exemption so and one of the things is when they go to bins it is the enclosure that is very hard to find a place for yeah yeah, yeah. definitely anything else for Ed this morning Good job. Well, thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. Hope good work. Thank you. Any other questions from the board at all? I'll take my leave. Have a great one. Bye-bye. You too. Let's go to organics then, Scott. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. Actually, if you don't mind, well, uh, item two and three we can do together. Um, these are just standard reports. Uh, happy to answer any questions you may have. Questions on organics or the solid waste diversion report? Organics went down a couple hundred from, from the previous month. But this falls along the line of the previous month of September. Um, back to alleys, I had mentioned, I think it may be the agenda review. Um, it was on the east side last week. It was their trash pickup day. And the CRNR truck was going down an alley off of Orange, one off of Orange Avenue, kind of west of 19th Street, I think. If I, there's an alley in that area. There isn't a lot of room for the truck to get it. I, the, the guy that was in the truck, the CRNR guy that was in the truck, had to actually get out of the truck to move the carts. It was He was so tight. It's like he had to pull up to a little open area and push the, the carts up and then dump them. Did, that, they, did they use a smaller truck? No, it was a big, it was the regular size. We don't use the small trucks in our area, do we? I uh, think CNR could if they, if they want to, but they, they don't see no need to. I just think from a safety standpoint and a practicality standpoint, having to, that guy to have to get out and move carts and then move them back, oh, wow. and it block, complete, completely <coughs> blocked the alley. So I, I don't know what the alternative is. I just Well, the, the alternative is to put it in front of the street, but that's I, the, that's, but the residents are going to go for that. Aren't gonna do yeah, that. right. So, yeah. What happens with the fire engine? I mean, think of the hazard that is. That trash truck would have to get out of there quickly, yeah. yeah. And lots of times there's contractors working, and they work in the alleys also. Yeah, so yeah. General, many times those alleys are not even passable. If that alley's not passable, that trash truck's not going down. He's going to make a pickup. <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah. Anyway, it's something we had to just keep in mind, I guess. Okay. Do we get something delivered to us when the council's going to approve something? or? Yes. 
Oh, okay, so we have the opportunity to check it out. Yes, okay. they, they have to get, they before it goes to the planning commission, they, they get a will serve letter from us for, for wastewater and solid waste. Oh, okay, so that we can comment then? Yes. Okay. yes. Didn't some of the recent developments, though, uh, lack a facility or uh, an enclosure? Uh, they went ahead and, and developed it with, without our approval. What, what, wasn't that, didn't that happen? Uh, I'm not aware of that. This was like a couple years ago, I think. Uh, we had, we instituted a plan where we made them have a trash collection plan and all the big developments didn't want to have an enclosure in their project. So even the big developments, over 100 units, they're using our service too. And it's really crammed in, but it, it does work. But as far as somebody uh, doing something, there, there were a couple of developments that were using, they were using rainbow carts if that's the one you're referring to, Director Ferryman. Yeah. So we gave them notice and they switched to our service. That's, that's not, I think that's the existing um, development. I think you're talking about new development though, right? That I think I was talking about new development. Yeah, that, that's a, that was an existing development that we found. Uh, it's been around for a long time. They were using rainbow um, um, services and we told them to cease and desist and CNR took over. Uh, as far as new development goes, I can't, I can't remember you might be right, but I just can't. I can't recall which one. Which one it was. We may have. We, we may have caught them along the way and, and yeah. turned them around, but uh, there was something to that. Effect. I just don't. Yeah, I'm for, I just don't recall. So the one remember. on Baker Street, wasn't it the complex on Baker Street that was using I, Rainbow? Yeah, but again, that that was that was a, that's been going on for years, right? So this, I mean, what Vice President Fairman's talking about is new development. When 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 new when the Planning Commission approves the development, I think what Vice President Fairman's saying is that we didn't put our our two cents in, yeah. and they just push it through. I have a question. Oh. Okay, I, th I think those those three-story units on Placentia, remember, we, we didn't know if the truck could make the turn, <coughs> and they'd have to back out. Right. Is that, did that get be, uh, resolved at all? You know uh, again, what I'm talking about? Uh, yeah, I, 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 and I, don't, I don't know. But that's one thing we, we do look at when we're looking at new developments, to make sure that we want to avoid the trucks backing up. Uh, we want to make sure there's a safe turnaround, so we do we do relay that to them. Those back up. Ones on Placentia are back. I, yeah. I've Those had to stop awful. while they back yeah. up. See, that's not right. You know, that's yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, the city has made it impossible for them to put their carts out on the street, so that forces the big trucks to go on site, yep. and they do have to back up. Sometimes they back up onto the complex, depending on which side the the carts are on. What about that complex, those houses that were built next to Wahoo's, across the street from Wahoo's on Placentia and Center? Did, can we get in there with a the truck? <coughs> you know what I'm talking about? Yes, we just go straight in and back out. Yeah, they can get in. It's just, it's just the backing back out is the issue. Yeah. And so, again, it's our recommendation, but ultimately the city's going to approve what they want to approve. Do, who, who attends those meetings for us now, the city meetings? Uh, as, far, as far as the development goes, um, um, BOW goes to those meetings, our engineering technician. Does he speak up and yeah. Oh, yeah, I can. Questions? All right, let's move to item four. Let's talk collection of officers. Thank you, Mr. President. Nolani Midway is going to be giving this report. Good morning, Mr. President, members of the board. This item is being brought to the board for action today as the ballots for the election of independent special districts of Orange County Executive Committee officers are due by 5 p.m. on October 23rd which precedes the board's regular meeting of October 25th. The nomination period for the ISOC Executive Committee officers closed on September 18th, where only one candidate was nominated and therefore deemed selected for the following seats. Our very own Secretary Arlene Schaefer is now the ISOC's second Vice President. Mary Eileen Matthias from Irvine Ranch Water is now the third Vice President and Joan Finnegan from Municipal Water District of Orange County is the treasurer. At this time, I ask that the board discuss and cast your vote for either Sandra Jacobs or Michael Posey for the seat of ISDOC president, and consider Lucille Kring or Mark Monin for the seat of ISDOC first vice president. Question. 
What happened to secretary? There were no nominations for the position of secretary. Okay, so that, that's right. I'm on that board. I guess I yeah. should have done it. We have a problem. So we'll have to appoint. Okay. Yeah. Correct. Um, so you're looking, are we looking to make a decision this morning then? Yes. Do you guys have a nomination? I, I will simply recommend for the office of president, uh, Sandra Jacobs has been very involved in his doc. I unfortunately don't even know Mr. Posey. I do. Okay, I don't remember seeing him at it. I assume, I assume it's, no, Michael. Oh, Michael. Posey for, the, for president. He's an Huntington Beach, isn't he? Yeah, yeah, but I don't remember him ever attending an yeah. his doc meeting, so. I seconded. Um, I'll, I'll mo I haven't moved yet. I'll move Sandra Jacobs as president of ISDOC. Second. Now I will second it. <laughs> Any discussion on that? I think she's a good candidate yeah. from the meetings I attended. That's okay. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Then we will vote for Sandra Jacobs for president. She currently serving as first vice president as well. So. Uh, first vice president, Mark Monin is the incumbent. Um, responsibility of, of second, he's the incumbent as second vice president, I'm sorry. And the responsibility of the second vice president is to recruit new members and membership, and he's done a pretty good job of bringing mm -hmm. people in. Mm -hmm. um, Lucille Kring, Alan, you may know, obviously you know her, but I, anybody else have any thoughts? Well, I'd like to move for uh, Mark to be first vice president. Did we ask for comments from Alan about this person? Sure. Yes, she she's a long term um, Anaheim council member, and um, so I know serves on vector control district. It's interesting that, uh, and just just as, you know, having been in his doc involved for the last several years, we've never even heard from vector control. Yeah. They don't. Part we really <laughs> don't get any input, or and now all of a sudden we have two people that want to be on our board. Is that some indication they want to be more involved, or is there some other motivation there? It seemed to be kind of a spontaneous uh, nomination <laughs> at a meeting. Is that right? Well, what bothers me the most is that um, I think we need to keep special districts involved rather than just uh, somebody that's sitting on the council. Uh, that, or she's actually representing Anaheim, and she's vector control, which vector control has somebody from every place. But at the same time, um, they haven't indicated, like you say, that they ever wanted to be part of special districts in that way. But I, I personally think that. Um, yeah, they are a special district, but yeah. their involvement with ISDOC has been limited. More than limited. Mr. President, I'll just add that um, for a while it was unclear whether they were a member, and then they changed yeah. the uh, law or the rules or something. That's and they, true. They clearly make them a member, and but I, I can't tell how long that ago that was. But at one time they were really not members. So. Right. Well, Thank actually, you. Alan. Actually, there were two from Vector Control that went for the for seats on this. Yeah. 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 The president and first yeah. vice president. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So you have a motion to uh, select Mark Monin. Mm -hmm. I'll second the motion. Mark second. Discussion, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Then it's unanimous that we will support Mark Monin. Thank you. Did we, before we move away from this item, did we designate who the voting representative from our board was going to be? It's, it's a president. Me, right? Is it so a we'll mail? Sign up. Is it a mail in? We it mail it in? It's mail in or email. So after the meeting today, I'll email this over. Excellent. Very good. Um, legislative update. Uh, thank you, Mr. President. Uh, Gina Terrano will be giving this report. Yeah. All right. Good morning, members of the board. Item number five is your quarterly legislative update. Um, Governor Brown had a deadline to sign or veto any bills passed by the legislature by September 30th. So attached to the staff report is a list of notable bills that were either chapters, chaptered, or bills that died during the legislative session. Among the bills that were chaptered um, and will go into effect next year, there are a few that I wanted to point out. So starting with a few solid waste related bills, we have AB 1884, 
which is going to prohibit restaurants from serving um, or providing single-use plastic straws to customers unless the straw is requested by a customer. And then we have SB 212, which places a responsibility on pharmaceutical and sharps manufacturers to help address the proper and safe disposal of their products. And so this bill is going to require them to take part in stewardship programs that will establish a minimum number of collection sites within each county. And the number of collection sites is going to depend on the population size of each county. Um, and then we have a bill that CSDA had sponsored and they were instrumental in getting passed and that was SB 929. This requires all independent special districts to maintain a website and it offers um, an exemption in case the requirement creates a hardship for the special district. There are also a number of bills this year that seek to address the issue of sexual harassment, including AB 2770, which allows a former employer to share whether or not a potential hire has been the subject of complaints of sexual harassment with an employer that is conducting a background investigation. And then there's also SB 820, which prevents confidentiality agreements from being included in settlements for claims of sexual assault, sexual harassment, or discrimination based on sex, unless it's requested by the victim. And then lastly, SB 1343 establishes a minimal, minimum sexual harassment training requirement for supervisors, which would be two hours, and employees, which would be one hour per year. Um, my report also includes some notable bills that did not pass, which include AB 2065, which would have required special districts to offer a right of first refusal to affordable housing developers, school agencies, and park agencies before putting their land out to lease. CSDA did lead the efforts to oppose this bill, and we talked to Senator Morlock and Assembly Assemblyman Harper about this bill during legislative days this year. Um, and then lastly, AB 2890 and SB 831 um, were both bills that sought to eliminate sewer connection fees for accessory dwelling units or granny flats. And both of these bills did fail in the legislature. Um, so the bills that were chaptered are going to go into effect January 1st, 2019. We may see some bills similar to those that failed come back in the next session, so I'm going to keep an eye on those and report to you with those next year. Um, that concludes my report. Happy to answer any questions. You know the one um, sexual harassment one that allows SB 820? Yes. That's going to get, don't you think that'll get challenged by the equal employment? Uh, somebody's going to challenge that one, I think. I mean, d basically, if, uh, if I'm looking at a, at a prospective employee, I'm going to now be allowed to, out, I'm going to be allowed to ask the former employer, uh, is there any sexual harassment charges? I that just, Alan, what do you think? Is that going to get challenged? Some, some part of uh, what you're mentioning about looking at employment records um, would be subject to those arguments of privacy. But as far as settlement agreements go, generally settlement agreements are public when a public agency enters into them. So um, I don't know if this is specifically related to s public agencies or not, but um, they're already um, they're already public unless uh, hardly any circumstances in which a yeah. government settling a case would not be a public settlement. Question, Scott: Would you ask that question of a future employee? Um, if he's been sex, if sexual harassment claims been filed, I'd have to t advise our, our, our attorney if I could. I, I can't answer that question. I, Just well, curiosity. Yeah. I mean, you can ask on a job application if you've ever been convicted of a crime. It's after they're they're made. They're, it's it's after they're they're made that the job's available to them. I cannot do it prior to offering the person the job. Once you offer the job, then you can do the background check. Um, but um, it's a little change of procedures. How does it work if you offer them the job? Then you look into it. Yeah, so, well. Contingent offer. Yeah. Contingent yeah. offer. Yeah. 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 <coughs> and a background check. It probably is a good way to go, probably, you know, if you have the legal authority to do it. Yeah. Yeah. Don't leave
couch a little bit more, Brian. Thanks, Dan. It's interesting how the law is changing. It's uh, going both way, both directions. It's, it took away the right to say, uh, "I want to see access to your um, Facebook." Uh, you know, that th they made that a privacy issue now, so you can't ask for that. That was usually what the police chief wanted to see was, uh, "Let me see your, let me see your Facebook uh, that you've got posted on there," and they said, "Can't do that anymore." So is they protected it, that. On the other hand, with the Me Too movement and all of what's going on, they they're going the other way on those kinds of issues. Is that just a California law or is it national? California law. California law. Well, it'll it'll be interesting to see now that we have a new Supreme Court justice, and no matter which side of the aisle you're on or what you, you know, that's going to become an issue that's going to eventually hit the Supreme Court about how you know statute of limitations and how long can you come up with this. So it's. I think it'll change. I think there'll be some discussion that'll get all the way to the Supreme Court, personally. But it is a different time. Okay, Gina, thank you very much. Good report. Uh, item six. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. So Rob Hamer's going to give this report. Uh, this is a very good staff report. Um, when he's concluded, um, I do like to uh, say a few words as, as well when he's done. So I'll, I will uh, turn it over to Rob to begin the report. Thank you. Just move it up a little bit. So this is our project to reconstruct the President pump station. And we went out to bid with these plans right here. And the bids came in high. But let's just run through it real quickly. What we have here. Can you? I'm sorry. It's, I think the valve's okay. too big. And so we basically, based on discussion with Scott and Alan, we think the best idea is to reject the bids because it came in so far above budget. So in the recommendations for the report at the board meeting, the first item will be a recommendation to reject the bids. And Alan may want to work up some language or something if there's special language that needs to occur. So basically, we went back to the drawing board and we're providing three alternatives. This is alternative one. This is the one we went out to bid with. And the low bidder 
is a uh, great contractor for the district. And he even said that if it goes out to bid, I'm gonna bid 2.2 million, not 1.95. So for the rest of this study, we now call this the $2.2 million design. And if you use this design, we are short in money of $802,000. So we, we have two million already. We split that funding between two years. So one million one year, second million, two million, we would need another $800,000. That's a lot. And when you consider that we were about to have a potential fine from the water board like 360,000 and then we also have a, uh, we have another SSO that we just had at Eldon Station. We'll probably pay 30 or 40,000 for that. So that's like having, that's like having $400,000 in bills that we have to pay soon. And this is another 800,000. So that's a lot of money. So that's one of the reasons we're discussing all this rather than making a straight out recommendation. So this was alternative one, and we brought two other alternatives for you to discuss. And I like all three, so I like them all. If you have questions, jump in there. Any questions, good question. Can you move this one up too a little? Before you go too far. Sure. On that uh, first rejection. Yes. First one. Don't you have to have findings for that? I mean, well, you can't just say you're rejecting because the, the bid was high. Actually, Actually, you can, but you'd probably say because it's outside of budget or something like that. But oh. you, could, you, don't, you don't have to have a, any reason whatsoever to reject. Oh, really? Yeah. Right. We have it written into the specifications okay. that we can. Director? How much difference is there in detention time with this, the new wet well and the old wet well? A uh, good question. We have not designed, this is alternative two. We haven't done all the design on it, but we were thinking about this early on. Th this would get us down to 1.45 million. This is the existing station right here. And on exhibit, or alternate one, we're removing that because it's in the way of what we wanna do here and it is an existing structure that we don't have plans for, only one we don't, so we don't know how thick the, the concrete walls are, how much rebar is in there, whether it's good or not. We don't know. But we do know that the other concrete structures that made up pump stations in the district were very well designed, really strong, lots of steel, uh, good thought, and engineering. So we do believe that it's a viable alternative to use, reuse this and we would use it as our emergency storage vault. And so we have some of the same components. We have our emergency storage vault. <coughs> the sewer line, you can see on this alternative, we're not relocating it. This is its alignment and this line will be under the bottom of that. So this is, the, anybody wanna get their phone? Me. Okay. okay. Thank you. So this is the new wet well, and we would use a prefabricated flight polyurethane tube with a 10 foot diameter. Inside another casing, stand it up on its top and drill that right in there. And then this would be the valve vault. So we have the same components, which are a <clears throat> emergency storage vault, wet well, valve vault, force main out, and away we go. And we would remove everything in here. And this is the, ex this was the, or this is the existing force main today. And now it, it used to go here to there and up that away. Now it goes, doesn't go over there. It goes over here, and then it goes that way. That's our brand new force main. So that is alter, alternative two, 
This would certainly be back down towards 1.45 million. I should have said before that alternative one did have a, a, a permanently mounted standby diesel generator right here. So uh, that would be, we could have that in on this design or not have it in. It's just a, what do you want, what do you don't want? And so now we have alternative three. That's Rob, Rob before you go on, may I ask a question? Of course. What's the difference in the capacity of the emergency uh, reservoir between the two? Okay, I forgot to get to that, thank you. The first one is really almost an, is a lot. We are going down 10 more feet deep in the first design than we are here. So this is more like the, even though we're putting emergency storage vault, this would be closer to like an hour rather than beyond two. And this would be an hour in the middle of the night. During the day, uh, this, would, this could get filled pretty quickly. That's part of the reason that this would be less expensive. Well, this is three. Could you go back to two, please? This is uh, not, not, yeah, so thank you. So the emergency storage vault would be right here and it's already way less deep and it's not that much, not that much storage. So in essence, this is a very small emergency storage vault compared to the other design. And we would really have most of our downtime or response time, it would help, it lengthens the time, but not by too much, meaning that it would probably give us in the middle of the day, uh, maybe an, uh, an hour. And then we would be having to make sure we got everything back started. So there is much less storage in this one here. We haven't actually done all the calculations because we're trying to go under discussion and come up with some ideas. So we have not calced it out completely, but it just suffice to say that it'll be much shorter. It is, it is our it existing, is, no, pardon? The, the, only, the only thing we have is, is that existing station. This is, right, the only thing we have out there is this here. Have we, have we had any overflows from the station? Yes, we have. And we've lost 20,000 gallons of wastewater into... Into the park. Yes. This is the border between the President Place residential cul-de-sac and Canyon Park. This is Canyon Park. And their storm drain is right there. So it goes out of here right on in. And this was one of the abandonment manholes that goes that away, which cannot be used for this. But, so let's just say it would be an extra hour at night and during the day, I would say probably 30 minutes of storage and that would be, we'd have to be out there. This one the doesn't. Between one hour and two hours? The other one would be at least two hours, even during the day. Because like I said, we went down 10 more feet. And what makes these, pump stations expensive is the emergency storage vault. That pushed the Irvine pump station project over $2 million when we were closer to 1.5, but the emergency storage vault was so expensive. And it's deep and it takes shoring. There's reasons in the staff report that go through that. So uh, let's go to three and get- Before you go to three, Rob, sure. there's no generator that's true. At this one, correct? Right. It, we're just showing that that's an optional thing and that we certainly could put it here. If we're all of a sudden we're broke and we can't afford it, well, we could, we have left a bypass pump here f for a while now. We actually have a bypass pump in the fenced in area so that if we have an emergency, it's right there. Not easy to hook up a bypass pump. 
as opposed to <coughs> a diesel generator. Okay. I have a question. Sure. If we did put a generator in there, would it kick on automatically with the power yes. going off? Uh huh. Uh, fully automatic. You can wire everything up. So what would be the estimated cost for that? That would be part of it anyway. We always make sure that the uh, the uh, the generator can come on automatically. There's what's called an automated transfer switch. So it's just like it senses what it, what we're telling it to do, and it does it. So uh, the gen we we own the generator, though. Right. We'd just be locating it there. Right. We, we it there's up. plenty of room here for it. We could fit it in here. We, we actually don't, we're not even showing all those walls here, like this wall. This is the easement line, is actually right here, like that. And his improvements are really in our easement. So uh, we have discussed that with him. Okay, so alternate three. Thank you. And this one, we, minimal changes to from alternate one, meaning there's the emergency storage vault. Uh, we don't show a depth on this design, but we could put the deep, this could all be the deep one, but we don't have it here, and the wires are above here, so it's over here, and it has the same components. It has the emergency storage vault, the wet well, the valve vault, a bypass valve, and then away we go. Uh, this one does have the generator here. So this is like the $2.2 million design, but with a minimal amount of changes that where it does impact the cost. Could you go back to one, please? Just a note of uh, something to keep in mind. This here is where the people walk to go in the park and walk right through here, go through the gate and out into the park. So in reality, and the city put up signs back here that say, park this way. So this is basically a prescriptive easement, meaning it's been used for so long by people in the city that it's not a written easement, but people use it and depend on it. So I discussed that with the homeowner, and I told him, even though uh, this is our easement line and we're not working over here, I said, you need to keep that open, and we as a district, we're going to funnel them through here. So this is going to be an eight-foot high wall, and this is going to be a retaining wall so that they can't get in here or even see in there. But this is, uh, we were gonna make it concrete. We show it here as DG, decomposed granite, makes a nice walking surface. So this is where the pedestrians will continue to go. So, uh, and that, we will do that on all of the designs. We have to, we can't not do that, otherwise, they could take us to court and they'd win. So basically, this, this design's probably closer to a little under two million. So that's a quick run through on all three alternatives. And you also have, uh, I did some budget calculations are in there. Mark can attest to that, that it is 800 more thousand dollars, 802, and that the difference between one and two is really $850,000 because alternate two, you don't have to do any transfer of money. There's already money in there because of the lower construction cost to redesign to get to alternative two. So. That is why we're in front of the board, is because this is uh, an important decision, has financial implications, and we have, we have solidly low sewer rates. 
And this is a major design here. So I think that's worth discussing. And I'm happy to answer questions at this point, or I can go through some more details that are in there. Um, hadn't we thought about um, the existing uh, President, uh, President Pump Station Force Main being used as an alternative in the future? The second Force Main, yes. We have not taken it, we're, we're not using it, but we didn't, we didn't remove it or cut it up or do anything. We left it so that we could possibly use it in the future. It would take a lot of rehabilitation because it's very long and it has a lot of turns and things, but that's kind of what our policy has been during all the new force mains is not, if we have to re remove the one to make room for the new one, we do it, but we're also trying to save the old one and maybe at some point in time rehabilitate all those so that we do have two force mains. It would have to be rehabilitated in order. Yes. I mean, it's presently usable. Yes, but uh, we decided that we weren't even going to use it as the bypass line for this design. This design, though, there's 120 working days, which is like six months. So it's not just expensive, it's time consuming. And that's because this is, I mean, this is access to get in here. And this would be one of the first things they have to build. And you can see that when they're building that, they can't, you know, how are they gonna get in here? This is actually flush with the ground but one of the reasons this is so high cost is because step by step, one structure, then another structure, then another structure, rather than just have this wide open and everything. And we expanded all the way to the easement limits with the new, this is retaining wall there. And uh, this is a retaining wall here also. So that's, and actually uh, there's wall all the way around. So that added to the cost too. When, when, if, when with this alternative, you'd have to have a, it looks like the new pump station is built on top of the old pump station. The old pump station would be removed. It sits right here and it would be removed from the ground. When you removed it, how would the sewage that shows up there be, be pumped? That's our bypass operation. Okay. And we would probably uh, build this manhole first of all, and then we would have yeah. this line coming in, and then we rebuild this, yeah. and okay. then bypass yeah. out of there, and couple right here, and away we go. Do you have preliminary engineers estimates on these three alternatives? We do know that as they said, that as uh, GCI said that they would bid 2.2 million for this design. And I talked to them about alternative two. And yes, that could be down around 1.5. I talked to the contractor about it. We have not put an engineer's estimate to alternate two. Nor have we, as I mentioned earlier, we have not completely fleshed out all the details of exactly how much emergency storage time we have in alternatives two and three. Alternative three, we didn't show any depths because that's one of the factors that drives the cost up. In, in your budget calculations, um, you have a bid, uh, uh, an estimate for one and two, but there's no estimate for three. Right, and that's because we haven't had the time. We have to go back and discuss a few things with the contractors. Uh, their bids were all the way up to 2.7 million. And what we're trying to do here is if you would like to make a list of questions that 
we come back and answer those questions, we can do that too. We can make a list like exactly how much storage time is there in alternatives one, two, and three. And those kinds of things and get a, a better estimate for alternatives two and three. Uh, we can do that, just need direction at this point. Mr. President. In terms of the President Pump Station, can you give me an idea of how much, not how much, but where does the sewer come from that goes to this pump station? The Freedom Homes. So almost all the Freedom Homes. Yes, the ones like uh, President Place, uh, National. So basically up to 19th Street? Uh, right. Okay. Over to how far east? Like. Uh, Essentia? Yes. Okay, so then that, as we look at the alternative, um, the west side of Costa Mesa seems to be the area that developers are clamoring to do something with. That's true. They've run out of the east side. Yeah. So from a crystal ball standpoint, when we consider these three alter or the alternatives you've presented, how much future impact from future development is going to affect? I, you know, I, I'd love to have two hours of of time, but an, is an hour sufficient? Is an hour going to be sufficient for the future? Is this, you know, if we if we take the the least expensive alternative, um, is that going to accommodate what's going to happen in the future? Very good question. When you have, like the Freedom Homes, what can you do? Can you put, I basically I believe you could put up a granny unit. I don't think anyone's big enough to be able to, to add an extra unit, meaning what have I'm one, build yeah. an extra one. What I'm looking at more is the Placentia Corridor. We've but, already seen these monolithic things being put up and they're already starting to tear down more of the industrial if you go right next to Mesa Water the old Senec paint company all of that's being torn out right now well what's going in there are they going to put five more of those big buildings and right that, I, that's what I'm looking at that's a good point I I can next time bring a map of the service area and we can take a good look at that Mr. President, if I may, uh, thank you, thank you, Rob. That's a very good presentation. Um, alternative one is what we call the Cadillac version. You know, that's that's the version that staff prefers. Rob has met with staff m numerous times. Said, okay, what what is it that you want? And, and this is what Rob and staff came up with. And 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 this is the Cadillac version. I I do believe the the storage vault is 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 necessary. Um, as as Rob said, there the parks adjacent to to the station. There's also an open storm drain channel near there that our last SSO the storm drain got into, but we we we, we prevented the SSO going into the waterways. Um, so, you know, my obviously the additional eight hundred thousand dollars, as Rob said, yes, it is a lot of money. Um, that's why my recommendation is to still approve, reject the bids, approve alternative one, but direct staff to budget the eight hundred thousand dollars in next year's budget. Um, I don't believe we should allocate the funds this year, even though you can, we could find it. Um, and I'll have Mark talk more about this. But keep in mind, Rob mentioned about the SSO we had earlier this year. It's going to cost us $30,000 in fines. We spent over $150,000 alone just responding cleaning to that. Okay, We're spending another $50,000 on a couple of investigations. Add that to $800,000, there's a million dollars we didn't plan on budgeting. We didn't plan on spending. So my, my recommendation, I think we go with, the, go with the alternative one. This is the best option we have for us, I think, because of the storage tank. It's well-designed. It's the best option for, our, it, it, it's for the community. Unfortunately, we just underestimated it. We made a mistake. We underestimated it. It is what it is. So let's, now we know what the true value is $2.2 .2 million. Let's reject the bids, direct staff to budget at $800,000 in next year's budget, and we can go out the bid in July of, of next year. I have a question. Can you extend the bid time? No, we can't. We can't do that. No, it's illegal. We can't do that. Why, why, why reject the bids and go out the bid if you know it's going to go up $200,000 or 400, whatever the number is? You're going to get, what you're saying is you want the same design 
uh, and you reject the bids, then you know there's going to be more. Is that, it, is that is, it, is, yeah, it is what it is. We, just, we underestimated the, 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 the project. But, and so the fact uh, is... Well, I, I'm, not, I'm not quibbling about underestimating the project. You just said you want this design. The, the funds are there. They're in the asset management. Um, the, the $5 million that we approved in the asset management fund is already there. It's more than 500000 It's more than $5 million. And that's what the fund was there for, was to, you know, to take care of uh, going up and down. Uh, and sometimes we have more than $5 million, sometimes we have less. Um, but did you just say you want, you want to reject the bids and go out the bid knowing that this is going to go up? Director Uden? Yeah. The low bidder, GCI, yeah. doesn't like his bid. He thinks it's too low. He went back, he told me that he underestimated the shoring and that even though he bid 1.95, yeah. he, he would say, I could do it for 2.2, but 1.95. He would want out of the bid. Right. He actually does. He wants out yeah. of it because. Well, I would too if I were him. Right. Knowing what he knows yeah, now. I, I guess but the, I would too. The next bidder is $400,000 higher than him. And he's indicated, and I'm not sure, I, th I think we're getting on a slippery slope here if we're saying, oh, we're going to reject it. Um, we know it's going to be more. Are we favoring that guy in the next bidding process, or are we still going to be open about everything? Well, I, I believe that the other bidders would take a second shot at it because we're, we wouldn't be changing anything. We could just use the plans as they are. And... Now they could say, okay, so uh, we get it. And because when we had the, the mandatory pre-bid, a lot of people were saying, you sure you don't want to add another million to the engineer's estimate? So this is also tight spaces as you, if you go out there, there's hardly any room. And as it is now, our big vector truck has to back in to the station, which is great driving skills. So those are all good questions. We could just reject the bids, and I could come back with a service area map. I could come back with storage times, maybe uh, better engineer's estimates, uh, whatever you would like. But uh, Scott brings up a good point. This is the Cadillac. You can tell you can tell just by looking at it. It looks great. I mean, it came out wonderfully well. I have to. It's beautiful. You know, I don't mind doing the Cadillac if we're doing the right thing. Um, I guess what I'm nervous about is rejecting the bid without some documentation or some evidence from the low bidder that, oops, we can't do it. I would like some reassurance or something, some documentation from GCI saying. Even though we bid 1.95, we're telling you right now we're not going to be able to do it for that. I, I, to me, that would make me feel a lot better knowing that he's confirmed that he can't, they, I keep saying hey, and I'm, that they can't do it for that. He'd be Mr. Happy. President, can I weigh in legally on this matter? Because there's a lot of legal questions out there. And in answer to your question directly, we, we um, the right to um, hold the bids open is the contractor's right. So he doesn't have to hold the bids. If he's willing to hold the bids, we could award to him and continue it on. But if we did reject the bids, we couldn't favor anybody or say uh, only one bidder or anything like that. Everybody bids again. It's a clean slate again. So I, hopefully, that, hopefully that's the those are the two answers you needed. I, I just don't want the public to have a perception that, oh, you know, we're just going to close it and let him get more money. I, it just doesn't look... <laughs> you I know, that's what Mosher says. And, you know, he, he would be the, the, yeah, yeah, so the first thing is why. This is why I think it's important to have a finding. Well, yeah, the, to me, the finding is GCI coming back and saying, look, even though we bid 1.95, we're telling you right now we can't. I believe he you, would be obviously. happy to write that letter. I, I guess that would. Yeah. Uh, and, and, he, and if he accept, if he put in the bid and he didn't uh, try and get out of the bid legally. Uh, like he made a mistake, under the law, a mistake. Not just I bid bad. I had I put a bad bid in. He's obligated to do the bid for that. 
Now, we'll have to sit on him to make sure he doesn't try and make it up and change orders, but we have to do that with every contractor. I, that, that's what, what I was thinking. I mean, couldn't we just say to him, hey, sorry, we said 1.95, go for it. But what, we're going to get eaten up with change orders that will get close to the 800000 I'm sure. Yes, it would be uh, – it would not be – a good situation and he would be more than happy to write that letter I've discussed that with him as well is that okay for us to do Alan can we get what would the letter accomplish it, it would tell me that mm -hmm. his bid was not good withdrawing mm -hmm. bid basically to withdraw his basically bid. withdrawing the bid I guess if given the chance would he withdraw his bid kind of well the issue is can he legally withdraw his bid or not and if he can't he has to do it for the price that's what bidding is all about correct there is a, I don't know if he'd be uh, willing to say he made a mistake, but there is a provision in the. Right. You have, within so many days, you have to say, I made a mistake in the math, and here it is, I can show you on the big right. sheet. But it's a real short time limit, and I think that's probably gone by by now. So it's not, you know, it, you're in the catbird seat in terms of if you want to go forward with it, you can get it for that price, and then just rely on your people to sit on him and make sure he does the job for that. But if you're not comfortable because of finances going forward with it now, then, you know, as Scott and everybody said, you have to go over to the next fiscal year and find the money. It would not be a pleasant situation trying to force him to build when he knows that. I, I, I think that's how I, I agree. Did we, uh, when we knew, uh, fell out of bed with Orange County Sand District, they gave us some money to uh, compensate us for, yes. for some of that. How much was that money in it? Was, it was, was actually any of it in there? You're exactly right, Mr. Vice President. And that's that manhole that we saw before, which is right here, and that sewer that goes through the park. Mm -hmm. And Scott negotiated with them. And what was the final number? Do I you think recall? it was about $200,000. About $200,000 they reimbursed us. One last item is if he uh, gets out of the bid and says, I can't do it, I made a mistake, and he didn't have the legal grounds, then he forfeits his bid bond, which is 10% of the price of the job, goes to the district. So you made some money there. That's a lot, too, 195000 On what basis are we re – refresh me – on what basis are we rejecting the bid? If that, that's your recommendation is to reject the bid, what's the rationale that we're, we have for rejecting the bid? We don't have the money in the budget. We have $1.95 million, right? No, no, oh, we're, no still, we, we're still. Because your original estimate was one point four. Right. We need, so need 802000 more dollars to fund alternative one. Well, that's what you're – but really, we're only looking at a half a million difference. Well, it, do you want to turn to the budget calculations, Nalani? No, if, if, you, if the original estimate was 1.5, and he's coming in at 1.9. Yeah, 1.9 right? to 2.2 is not 800. You do what Alan's saying and hold, it, hold him to his bid. We're only short by half well, only. We're yeah. short by half a million. You gotta so probably add another twenty percent to that. You gotta put ten percent contingent and ten percent for admin so cost, inspection cost. Right I yeah. understand that part of it, Scott, but it doesn't say that on the on the report. Right. It, it, if you go down you have ten percent contingency. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. We have a go all the way down. All the way. All the way. There you go. Budget calculation. Okay, so here we go. So, uh, item one. So, original budget, $2 million. That's our design fee that we have spent. And that included surveyors, civil engineers, electrical engineers, structural engineers, soils engineers, et cetera, et cetera, the whole ball of wax. And then, so that comes off of that. We've spent probably 1000 2000 on blueprinting. We reserve this to make a sole source purchase of the pumps we want. The board approved that in a board meeting. So if you start with that, this is what we really have 
to work with. Okay? That's what we have to work with. There's your 2.2 low bid. 10 Why is it not 1.9 low bid? Pardon? Why is it not 1.9 low bid? Isn't that what the bid came in at? This is if we put it back out to bid. Then why are we talking about that? Because assuming that we we go back out to bid. Yeah, I thought the president was asking about what if we were to find the money and, and award the bid. Well, he's saying it's five hundred thousand dollars. Yeah, we, can, we need five hundred thousand. Right. Well, I'm showing it's not five hundred thousand. I'm showing it's eight hundred. No, I, I understand what he's doing yeah. here. That's, that's, I'm yeah, just showing I'm just, you that this you know this is how we structure our bids that we take the low bid 10% 10% and all of this minus that uh, equals that in the negative if we hold but if we hold GCI to, to his bid it'll be an additional 500,000 if we hold forget about yeah forget about this part go back to the numbers under your analysis on the staff report right we're looking at a difference of 500,000 which is justification for us to reject the bid, right? Okay. I like Bob's idea. Let's go for it. Take it out of the funds we have available. And well, before I, I, I suggest you ask um, District Treasurer comment on that where we get the money, if you want to go that direction. Um, that was only my uh, evaluation like of the, the economics. The I'm, I'm not sure that I'm sold on that first alternative. And, and we're just looking for board direction on how to work it up for a, a, a real agenda item where we actually make these d decisions. This is just, we're just having a discussion right here. This isn't for action right. tonight. Right. I think alternative one is, is risky. You know, one of, one of the riskiest things we did at Orange County Sand District was try to pump out of a manhole for six months. Um, you know, the pumps clog and, um, you know, the, the, and and I think the staff report said that you know this is the new standard. The, you know we we don't have we only have one emergency storage vault in the districts, I believe, and it didn't serve us quite right, you know, in, in the past. It, it I mean you know with minor job. modifications it, it could have, but. Um, Mr. Davis, what do, you, where do you stand in all of this? I can show you the numbers. We've got five million dollars in the No, I understand, Bob. I, 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 and I, I, I'm with Art. I think what you're talking about is what we need to do. But I think Mark needs to weigh in on this. I, I think that uh, regardless of whether you opt to accept the bids or reject, and and if the if this is the scenario that it turns out, bottom line is you're short, whether it be five hundred thousand to eight hundred thousand um, dollars. If we were to move forward on that um, uh, now the only source of funds to be able to go get that would be to tap into your asset management fund to do that. That would still require us, we would still come back next year and ask for all that money back in next year's, uh, next year's budget. I don't believe that it's, um, uh, it's just too much of a, a large dollar amount to piecemeal things together, that it's, it's a size of a project that should be budgeted, included in the budget, in the budget process. Um, if there's, if there's no, um, imminent need that this that between now and July that this happens I would recommend uh, support what Scott had suggested that it, it wait until the budget process happens if there's an absolute imminent need to do it now then we would tap into the um, uh, we would seek your approval of transfer funds from the asset management fund you're recommending we reject the bids well don't that's, they I mean that's what Scott said we need to reject the bids and put it rebid it based on the on the calculations that we're seeing, right? In my in my audit experience and auditing construction projects, yeah, I do think you're going to be change orders to death, and I think it will go way above the two point two million dollars once the person starts tapping into the ability to get change orders approved. And we should reject the bids. Well, we're not going to take that action. Today. No, but I mean, when you come back and do, and I mean, so the, at the board meeting at the end of the month, need some direction. What we want us to do. I think we should reject the bids and then, you know, get get some uh, more firm estimates on the detention times and and the, um, oh, the engineer's estimate on each of the two alternative projects. Um, I you know, without that information, it's hard to make a decision. Correct. Yeah. What does everybody else think? Well, I mean, what 
what assurance do we have if we go if we reject this and they come back they could come in higher than they they uh, did this time didn't they right but the guys who are a little bit higher might be able to figure out a way for them to get lower too so you mean they're all looking at a second second chance so right do you want to go up the staff there. report so you Every, get everyone to everyone will get another chance to bid on it okay yeah. Okay, you're right. Right, as long as we're okay right now for six months I mean yeah then I mean, it's gonna take another year to get I, I there are the bids right there if we go back to what Mark said is there an imminent need for this project to go forward now or is July budgeting I guess we really don't know until something happens I think we're okay yeah, the good we, we did replace the force main pipe I think that was that was more of a priority that that's was a well but that's done so that's good so I, I you know waiting another seven eight months on this project it's not going to kill us I think we'll be fine agreed does that bypass pump we have there now does that kick on automatically no it has to be hooked up that's what kind of worries me a little bit you know but we do have a generator there I know but does that kick on automatically yeah it does okay as long as that kicks on automatically okay, okay. so we can store a generator there yeah, isn't there one there right now so it's, it's on the trailer that's true I guess the bypass pump isn't there anymore they put the generator there instead. But how long, if it happens during the day, we can probably handle it within an hour, but what about at night? Well, at night, the flows are way down. As long as the generator kicks in, it, we're fine, yeah. But we have to get the generator over there. No, it's there right now. Is it there right it's there now? right now, yeah. Okay. Well, it's going way and down. it's hooked up okay? If it is, yeah. Can so you double check on that just to make sure? I mean, not right now, but it, you know, is that would ease my feelings a little bit. It's already there, ready to go. Okay, unless there's other comments, do you have a direction then, Scott, on what, what's going to happen? I'd, I'd like to see Alternative 2 come back with a, with a permanent generator. Yeah, that's a good idea, too. The, uh, the, the idea was, uh, I'll confirm it, the, the generator there right now, I think we talked with Rob, is, is on a trailer. If we just remove that generator from the trailer, boom, it's a permanent one now. That's all we got to do. We don't have to buy a new one. Okay. So that's what we're looking into. Okay. Yeah. You, you're talking about immediately? And I, as we go forward with getting the new bids, just again, it's a little quirk of mine. I, I want to know what what the potential, is, what's going on in the future, and how much more you know. Get an idea from the city what's going to happen with some of that stuff. Right, I will bring the service area map for the pump station, Thank and we'll put it up on the screen. That is, that is worth it. And, and I would like a, an estimate of the present flow. Orange County Sand District is down 30, 40%. All the big sewage treatment plants are way down in flow. And, the, and Jim and I went to uh, the Waco meeting. Several of us went to the Waco meeting, and they're predicting another 20% decrease in the per capita flow in the future so we way back when they were anticipating 240 million gallons and it's done going through there 180 now, now. 180. and and you know and that's and that's predicted the by the, what the presentation Jim and I saw to go even lower in the future because yeah, that's funny because I, I'm uh, you, your natural needs for sewer are going to continue so is this kind of a the drought and less people it's putting the product water. of all the efforts to curtail the uh, and the you know the drought. future toilets yeah, so yeah the gray, future future water. Yeah. yeah the future toilets are even smaller than they are now yeah. 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 Uh, some people maybe <laughs> some people. <laughs> okay so we're good direction good, good job thank you yeah thank you that was, that was really good thanks. I think we're at item seven, Scott. Yeah, thank you, Mr. President. So, uh, 2019 is the Costa Mesa Sand District's 75th anniversary, and in your strategic plan is Strategic Goal 4.5 that requires the approval of an ad hoc committee that consists of board members and staff to plan year-long activities for recognizing the district's 75th anniversary. You might recall um, in 2013 um, the board established an ad hoc committee. To plan activities for the 70th anniversary 
and that was uh, Director um, Perry and President Schaefer served on, the, on that ad hoc committee. Uh, staff is recommending another ad hoc committee be formed. Um, the with two two differences though from the 2013 committee. One is that we're also recommending um, the Citizens Advisory Committee appoint two members. So they're meeting tomorrow night. If you approve an ad hoc committee today, we'll go to the committee tomorrow night and ask for two appointments from their their committee as well. So there'll be um, uh, two members from the board, two members from the CAC and and staff. And then the other difference is. Um, uh, District Council believes that the ad hoc committee does have to comply with the Brown Act, so we would have to post our meetings to the public. So that we didn't do that last time, but this time we will we'll, we'll do it. Why? Oh. It's just an ad hoc committee with two members. Why? There, there was some recent case laws. I think um, Council Burns cited. What happens? If we just have two board members. We're still looking into that, but that was okay. that was my preliminary conclusion. Was that yeah? It used to be that ad hocs were not subject to the Brown Act, but. Like there was a case out there that we were troubled by, but uh, that's not a final answer. But that is what I told Scott. It, it, it's it's nothing wrong with it. it's to be on the safe side. Nothing wrong to have something in the public to, uh, to oh. share in the public what, what we're planning on. So nothing wrong. There's you know no issues with that. So the action we need to take is give you direction on going forward with an ad hoc committee, poll the CAC to see if they want to participate, and then establish this ad hoc at the board meeting. Is that right? Yes, yes, we can do that. If you can, if you give direction, you want to establish an ad hoc committee. We'll go to the CAC, um, ask for uh, two appointments, and then we'll come back on the October meeting, and you appoint two board members. When would the ad hoc meet? Would it meet in the mornings? It's up to. It's really up to the committee. We'll have to no, establish. That's them. what I'm saying. But if you go to them and they can't make it in the mornings because they work and uh -huh. they can only come at night, I would rather have them in the mornings. Yeah, because we're busy with other things. I, I agree, uh, and and I think we need to make that clear with this, the members from the CAC that it, yeah. that, and knowing, I think they have enough people on that committee that could meet in the morning. So the board prefers your ad hoc committee meetings to be in the morning, or in the before, you know, like from eight till noon somewhere around yeah, there. Yeah. I'm just looking look at it my, myself because in the afternoons so I have uh, other things going. Okay, I will we'll relay that to the committee. And they they won't meet on Thursday, right? Just just kidding. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Is this a, a year-long deal that we do yeah. things periodically? Yes, that was the plan. Yes, the idea. Yes. And okay. would that start in uh, January, or as early as January? Yeah, we can. Um, you know, if uh, the board approves the committee on, in October, we can start meeting in November, December, and yes, yeah, start start planning as soon as we can. You know, with other ideas you want. Yeah. Are you gonna establish a criteria in other words by doing that then automatically they can say I can't be on it because it's a, in the morning and I work that's why I threw that out because some people probably have most yeah. of those guys probably have jobs. well I think I think the board the board members the first criteria should be past experience with <laughs> what <laughs> commit this type of committee action should we also include the fact that the ad hoc that the board members appointed should be no younger than 75? <laughs> I think I'm the only one. No, I think, I, I think no, I, you're I may be the only one excluded. Definitely younger. You took the words right out of my mouth. <laughs> I was looking on the way here. <laughs> um, uh, all right, so then let's, that good direction? Yep, yep, thank you. All right, anything else? So what do you want from them? No, I, I think I got your question. You, you want to establish an ad hoc committee, so so I'm going to go to the CAC, see um, if they want to appoint two members, and we'll come back in October board meeting requesting two appointments from this board member, from this board. And when would you come back to this? In the October meeting, the October uh, 25th? Yeah. October 25th. You know, I'm not going to be here that night, so. Okay, I guess you'll be appointed then, because you're not here. <laughs> you'll be appointed. <laughs> I I, that falls into the expertise, but uh, I did it for 40 years. Yeah, you're good, special ed. Okay, um, before we go to closed session, I'm going to do the closing items. Is that okay if we do item E, oral communications and director comments? Anybody have any comments, Bob? Well, I, um, th there's a manhole on Sicily and Geisler that I think has the potential of, uh, you know, part of, it, part of the... Um, asphalt and concrete coming up out of there and go into a wheel well. And, and uh, 
I, th I, I was sitting there watching it today and I was, or yesterday, I forget which, and you know, it's scary to see that those two little chunks of asphalt and concrete wiggle when people drive right over them. Yeah. When, when is that scheduled to be repaired? I believe that is, um, uh, correct me wrong, Rob, we, don't we have a, a project right now for, um, um, I, don't know. I, I, I remember I, f I shared this with um, Steve Cano, and uh, he's going to put on a list. I just don't know when it's done. I'll, I'll, I'll double check on that. I think it's almost an emergency. Yeah. I, I, you know, I don't know why we would want to wait for to put it on a contract. Is that what you're suggesting? We still, we still have that, that capital project open, number 311, which yeah. is for surface repairs of manholes. Yeah. So that's why it was left open. It's been it's been this way for several months. I would suggest if it's open, yeah. you enlist a contractor to fix it. We usually do that right away. The comments. All right, I'm before. Yeah. yeah. Uh, are we still uh, employing the two consultants that we uh, had on board for the? Uh, Bobble and Whittingham. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Is there any reason why we we still have them on? I, I don't get it. Yeah, we we there there are actually um, a statement that um, President Shaver is going to be reading was prepared by them. So they they do help us with our outreach. Um, we we do. Um, uh, they are um, um, meeting with elected officials throughout the county on, on LAFCO. So uh, staff leaves are they're definitely um, uh, worth the money. What they're doing, and we're paying them the same wage that we were before. No, we're paying them five thousand dollars a month. It used to be ten thousand. We're not paying five thousand a month. Okay, I have a statement. That, is this going as a press release or just for here? It's a statement, and then we'll post it on uh, social media on our website. Okay, um, this is regarding uh, the ongoing investigation into vendor billing, um, as been as has been reported recently in several media sources. Coast Mesa Sanitary District is in the process of conducting a forensic financial audit and an investigation into potential overbilling by the district's contracted engineering firm. This investigation was initiated by our general manager after he instructed our finance division staff to review all inspection related billings. This procedural and appropriate review revealed possible anomalies regarding billings submitted by an independent contractor who has been working with CMSD for nearly 40 years. Crow, formerly Crow Horwath, Horwath LLP, a leading public accounting audit and consulting firm was brought in immediately and is nearing completion of its forensic analysis of the matter. In addition, the district retained an outside law firm, Best Best and Krieger, to conduct interviews of all the parties involved in the matter and to review whether laws were broken or contracts breached. We anticipate this investigation will also be completed within the next several days. Any misuse of ratepayer dollars, whether intentional or mere oversight, would be a serious matter would be treated as such. If it is ultimately determined that any level of fraud or malfeasance may have occurred, the district would pursue both legal recourse and restitution to the fullest extent of the law. No judgment has been made about the matter and the district will await the results of the independent outside investigation. The CMSD Board of Directors is 100% committed to obtaining a full accounting of the situation and, and to taking any and all steps necessary to ensure that our residents are fully informed. As a district, we take our transparency pledge seriously and our board will always demand that our staff makes this a priority. I don't read, need to read about the customers. Okay, well, that statement is entered into the record and will be posted. Or you're not going to release this to the press, though. Uh, well, when we when we shoot it out, um, I know Luke Money is on our email, so he'll get it. Okay. Well, why why can't we wait? If 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 all the information from the attorneys and the uh, consultants is imminent, why would we put out a statement now? Um. After talking with um, our consultants and with staff, we just thought it was good to get a head out there, just get some because of the 
um, negative press out there. So um, it's a, just to try to more of a transparency issue, saying hey, we're we're working on it. I feel like Bob does. Well, then I would then I would then I would I would like to have a chance to review the statement before it's published. Okay. All yours. Okay. I, I think all of us should. I agree. I don't. I don't really like that myself. I, I, I'm not objecting to a statement. I'm not sure that this is the statement that, that I would like to approve. Okay. Well, next time we'll know better. And, and to further that, it said it, the, the uh, Best Bess and Krieger and the other Crow Howarth, it's imminent that they're going to submit some conclusions. How how imminent is that? Do they have a schedule or a deadline? No, we don't have a we don't have a schedule at this point. You you it just between you and them they've said it's close. Y yes, it's 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 close, right? You're, I mean, you're talking to them and yes, correct. Well, you know, um, as a person who goes to Iscoff meetings and Waco meetings, um, people are asking me what's going on, you know, and if. You know, chatting about trying to figure out if we're in a lawsuit again or what's happening. I think, I think so we need to be careful what we're saying. I know. Right so now, what so. I've said is the jury is out. We don't well, know. the first paragraph is probably all I would think we need to do. It says, as has been reported recently in several media sources, Costa Mesa Sanitary District is in the process of conducting a forensic financial audit and an investigation into potential overbilling by potential overbilling, and I would end it there. I mean, have we not published anything on the website? You know, not, not like I've been researching it every day, but uh, you know, I would I would think you could. This hasn't gotten out, right? No, it has not. I, I, I agree with Bob. Yeah, I do it's too. It's short and sweet. If that's not the district statement, then we should probably hold it up and uh, have a, another discussion about it at another time. Yeah, I'm. I, the, the the naysayers are going to be naysayers. Um, irrespective of anything we do, whether it's positive or negative or potentially positive or potentially negative, the same people are going to, you know, um, try to get, try to get our ears. You know, they they don't talk to me; they talk to Harley. <laughs> I don't blame them. <laughs> Those people are outside the city, most of them. Yeah. I mean, I could give. Mesa water. I was going to say a bad word. <laughs> That's not outside the city. I know, except the Mesa water. And uh, at this point, we're going to adjourn to closed session. Conference with legal counsel on anticipated litigation. Significant exposure to litigation pursuant to paragraph 2 of subdivision D of section 54956.9. Okay. Okay, well then we're going to uh, return to open session and report out of closed session that the board of directors has given uh, myself, the president of the board, the... Um, responsibilities to look at the personnel investigation reports and uh, make those decisions. Make, I'm sorry, make any determinations. Okay, anything else? We're adjourned. <laughs>